Welcome to the Specialty Coffee Association online training. Today's course is going to be Roasting Foundation. The SCA represents a global community of coffee enthusiasts and professionals who are devoted to continuous learning and always improving the practices of our industry. It is my goal through the resources found at www.sca.training that I can share with as many people as possible the great coffee training provided by the SCA along with preparatory lessons for all SCA certifications. These include introduction to coffee, green coffee, roasting, sensory analysis, brewing, and barista skills. My name is Adam, but I also go by the Chinese name Huang Peng. Since 2015, I've been an AST, that's an authorized SCA trainer, and part of my training involved immersion into Mandarin Chinese, as I took the bulk of my courses and exams in a second language. I realize that not everyone is a native English speaker, but that's okay. Coffee is a great medium providing engaging content for any coffee enthusiast who wishes to improve a second language, their English, for example, with the slides, videos, recordings, PDF transcripts, and more provided on our website, coffee and English learners can double their learning. All right, aside from the introductions course, the other five modules are offered at three levels from foundation to intermediate and finally professional. If you enjoy the content, please be sure to tell your friends and help them move forward in their specialty coffee training. Share the links on the website as the content for now is free. For more great content, stay tuned to our website, sca.training, where I plan to share more with you, certified training programs from introduction to coffee, green roasting, sensory brewing, and barista skills. Today's course content comes from the SCA Roasting Module Foundation level. I'll start off with the theory required for Roasting Foundation written, practical, written and practical skills assessments. These two exams must be taken in person with a certified AST trainer before you can earn certification for this module. So when you're ready to sign up for a class and take your exam, I hope this primer course proves itself greatly useful. There should be trainers or schools near you, but if you'd like to reach out for a recommendation, feel free to drop me a line on the website and I'll try to rec recommend a reputable trainer or location near you. Soon you'll be on your way, growing with more advanced content at the intermediate and professional levels. So let's get started. Here are the general details for our courses provided by the Specialty Coffee Association. The aim of this module is to introduce core roasting skills and equipment to people with previ no previous roasting experience, while according to uh, maintaining core SCA standards. Though this course can be completed in seven hours, I found through experience that many students like to invest a whole day, one and a half, or even two days learning, practicing, and performing the skills especially spending time with the roaster. So in that way you'd have a much better classroom experience and testing result. It's recommended, though not required, that this course be attempted after taking the Introduction to Coffee Training module. In addition to general coffee knowledge, familiarity with coffee roasting is certainly helpful for students who wish to feel more confident in their practical exam. You will also find that surveying the content of the green coffee course will provide a great baseline of knowledge with practical applications for becoming a better roaster. Every course in SCA training includes both practical and theoretical teaching. Though you should find the knowledge shared here sufficient to pass the written assessment, we always encourage our classes, we always encourage to attend a class locally course with a certified AST instructor. The benefits are myriad and the dynamics of getting hands-on experience with other coffee peers is priceless. However, for our online students, the practical skills content may require that you find a local cafe or roastery where you can observe, practice, and hone some of these skills. The written assessment will cover the history of roasting coffee, types of coffee roasters, roaster gauges and controls, green coffee, heat transfers and some basic physics, basic roasting and the roasting cycle, drying stages, roasting stages and cooling, safety, and a summary. 
Given the nature of the roasting course, more time is required for the practical exams. These sessions above will be completed both alone, individually, and in pairs or working groups, depending on your class size and the number of machines or equipment available for use. During the roasting practical assessment, you'll be expected to follow instructions and record three different roast. You'll also record relevant roast properties on the roasting form. You'll identify basic stages of coffee in the roast process. You should use your sensory analysis skills to cup and identify various stages in the roast as well. There's a total of 85 minutes allotted for the practical assessment and 30 points. All right, so coffee roasting is not merely a science. It's much more complex than just an art. It's this beautiful harmony combining traditions of roasting, we're talking hundreds, thousands of years, with the science of physics, botany, chemistry, and much more. So even the best roasters must then understand the dynamics of consumer preference, marketing, and economics so that they can really progress in their career. The good news is that understanding this course can provide every player in the long coffee supply chain a more competitive advantage with practical daily applications to their specific niche in the trade. Now we'll go through some historical developments here. Uh, we'll, this is a brief survey. It's not meant to be conclusive, but starting back in the 15th century, so the 1400s, in the Ottoman Empire and Greater Persia area, uh, they would hold a brazier or a uh, small container, you'll see a picture in the next slide, over hot coals. And the coffee was inside and uh, turning or shaking it, it would be roasted. Later on, the first cylinder roaster with a crank to keep the beans in motion appeared in Cairo, and this was around 1650. French, Dutch, and Italian variations of the design quickly appeared and spread through different countries. By the 19th century, various patents were awarded in the U.S. and Europe for commercial roasters. This allowed for larger batches of coffee. Nevertheless, surprisingly, home roasting continued to be popular. Yes, 200 years ago, people were roasting coffee by themselves. A man working at a commercial roasting plant in the beginning of the 1850s in St. Louis, Missouri, said that selling roasted coffee was uphill work, as everyone roasted coffee in a kitchen oven. Here we have some of those pictures. Very early um, ideas was holding coffee in a large spoon or shovel-like device and then stirring it while it was over a stove, which later translated to the closed um, container and maybe there was a stirring uh, apparatus connected to the top of it, you see the bottom left there, or even shaking that closed container would result in um, keeping those beans moving for the roasting process. And then later a some sort of a closed oven with a hand turn crank to keep the beans moving and rotating was used. You can see on the right hand side there there's a, a drawer down below and a door down below where they could insert fire or wood and they could remove the coals and ashes. So these were very um, primitive you could say but uh, essential in understanding the development of the roast process. Later on appliances for home roasters were developed. So again by the 18, mid 1800s um, we were looking at wood-fired kitchen stoves. Green beans were available at the local general store or even through mail order. Burns, the last name Burns, felt that home roasting would soon disappear because of the great strides that were being made in commercial roasting by the late 1800s. Of course, economies of scale and other concerns like smoke led to commercial roaster inventions patented by Burns. You might recognize the name Burns from Burns Probat. Later, these were revolutionized in the U.S. roasting industry and uh, other inventors such as Emmerich Amrain greatly advanced commercial coffee roasting in Germany. From that time, commercially roasted coffee grew in popularity until it gradually overtook the home roasting during the 1900s in America. Here we have some other cylindrical and uh, drum-fired roasters. All these improvements in roasting technology 
One of the things that they quickly recognized was a constant rotation of a drum or a constant rotation and movement of the beans. Why? Because the beans need to receive efficient conductive heat transfer. That means they can't touch the drum for too long or the, the heating chamber. That prevents uh, moving the beans, prevents scorching. So when touching a hot drum surface, like if you left them sitting in a frying pan or in a toaster oven, you would need to manually rotate these. So uh, many inventions were, um, technologies were developed to keep those beans constantly in motion. So here we are in the early 1900s and we're starting to get the first electric roasters patented in the US and Germany. Respectively, these uh, helped to eliminate the problems of smoke and fuel vapors that would often get trapped into the roasting compartments and impart a bad taste. So not just electric, but we're introducing uh, fans to drive out those fumes or drive out that smoke. In France, the home roaster, uh, it didn't yield so quickly to the commercial roaster until the 1920s. But this was, uh, and this was especially true in rural areas. Coffee was roasted in a very dark color. We've heard of French roast in small batches at home or by shopkeepers. But because of the smoke and the blowing of chaff, uh, many country dwellers typically roasted outdoors. So they would have a shack or an area for doing so. Uh, interesting development in the 1950s was the instant coffee craze and uh, recently at home we've been watching I Love Lucy episodes and uh, they feature a Sanka, S-A-N-K-A, -A, a Sanka commercials about uh, instant coffee. Tastes just like brewed coffee and they have a whole expression and uh, tagline that goes along with it. But this became very popular as a drink. It was easy to make at home, it didn't require smoke and brewing, and uh, specialty coffee houses actually began opening, offering more traditionally brewed beverages. So this instant coffee push also helped for uh, the specialty coffee house industry to start to emerge. So there was a distinction recognized between these forms of coffee. Here on the top right, we have an electric uh, hot air um, machine. Bottom left, you can still try this today. Uh, as long as you can control some of the smoke and keep those beans moving, you can use a frying pan. And then a nice sample drum roaster down on the bottom right there. So continuing on to the 1970s, more specialty coffee houses were founded, ones that offered a variety of roast and beans from all around the world. So we're starting to recognize that coffee has more than one flavor. By the 1980s and 90s, a gourmet coffee industry experienced great growth. Okay, so before that, through the 70s and 80s, the Simmons Sirocco home roaster was made in West Germany, but it was marketed globally. It was a small fluid bed roaster made for the home enthusiast. By 1976, chemical engineer Michael Sivitz patented a competing hot air design, which became popular as an economical alternative. Okay, so we've got hot air, fluid bed, civets called for a home roaster to focus on the quality of the bean. Okay, so we're moving to uh, higher volume industrial applications, highly mechanized and computer controlled. Uh, this would be a common, common site in some of our larger cities and larger specialty roasteries. In the 1990s, more electric home roasting equipment became available, including drum roasters and variations on the fluid bed roaster. By 2001, gourmet coffee aficionados were using the internet to purchase green coffee. Okay, So we're uh, focusing now on uh, subtle developments in various stages, considering airflow, cooling volume. Okay, We've transitioned from heat sources like wood to gas to electric. Heat transfer can occur with direct or convection or conduction, infrared. Many different drum materials have been used or experimented with, cast iron, stainless steel, burners, atmospheric burners, electrical burners, infrared burners, drive belts and chains and motors, emissions filters and smoke control. Ultimately, all of these things would identify and help drive quantity, quality, and efficiency. All right, so this is gonna end our first section, and I do wanna add here that um, these are basically used as introductory comments and not, not critical for the uh, 
uh, exam that you will take at the end of this course. Thank you.